AMD's got the need, the need for speed. Intel decides that they don't wanna wait for announcements. They're just gonna leak their graphics card stuff all on their own. And a game so popular, they have to stop selling it. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. So I'm gonna be going through the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet and delivering it straight to your eye and earballs. So why don't you buckle in, strap on, and get ready for the hottest tech news that's on the internet. So let's go ahead and talk about the new indication that AMD is readying up their DDR5 chips. This is coming from benchmarks that are appearing out on the internet where people get to play around with all of the latest pieces of technology and then forget to hide the device IDs and then put it on the internet for everybody to see. So this first Ryzen CPU now is showing up. It's an engineering sample, has eight cores, 16 threads, 16 gigs of DDR5 at 4,800 megahertz and looks to have a base clock of roughly four gigahertz. So a pretty decent chip overall, but some of the indications does seem to be that this might be a mobile part as opposed to a desktop part for now. We're expecting the Ryzen 6000 series of processors to have DDR5 support, either the ones that are based on Zen 3 Plus, which is going to be the upcoming APUs, or the ones that are based on Zen 4, which should be the desktop chips. We're not very clear on the timeline for all of this just yet, but this would come with DDR5, better RAM support, combined with the RDNA 2 GPUs, which if they're anything like the current APUs, perform better with faster RAM, so you might be able to get really good APU performance, not just from the GPU, but also from the RAM support. Now, the benchmarks on this aren't a whole lot to go by. As mentioned, this is an engineering sample. It's not quite ready for production, and it does appear to be between what AMD has right now and what Intel has out right now, so it's not something that you should save up your cash dollar for just yet, but just know that the future is DDR5, my friends, and AMD is going that way as well. By the way, we will be getting AMD C CES keynote announcement on January 4th. AMD is calling it their product premiere, or likely many products that are supposed to be announced here. We're expecting things like the 6500 XT, AMD's new Zen 3 with 3D cache technology, potentially some new mobile lineup stuff, but we'll just have to wait until 7 a.m. Pacific or 10 a.m. Eastern on January 4th, which if you're going to CES, let me know down below in the comments, or if you are not, which probably most people don't go to CES, especially since the whole, you know, pandemic thing. I forgot to put my mug back. I'm just, I'm just curious, so let me know down below. And I'm gonna let you know about today's video sponsor, my friends. Today's video is brought to you by Honey. Do you like saving money? I like saving money, especially this holiday shopping season. Honey has saved my bacon by making sure that I have the best codes that are actually making sure that I'm not just buying everything at full price, like some sort of noob, because it's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. It's essentially your online shopping best friend. It's incredibly simple. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out at one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons, just like I did when I was buying some RAM on Newegg the other day. And then you just wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons on that site. And if Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the prices drop. And those of you who are part of our audience have installed Honey and have saved over $54,000 in savings so far. And Honey supports all kinds of retailers, including tech, gaming sites, clothing brands, even food deliveries. So don't wait any longer. Go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech, install Honey in two easy clicks, regardless of what browser that you're on. And you can make sure you're going to start saving money as you're shopping. Again, that's going to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. Big thanks to Honey for sponsoring today's video. And while Honey can find the best codes on the internet for you to save money, Intel can't find its own codes for putting in their GPUs and their own driver announcements. Intel leaking their own Elasti DG3 three dedicated GPU that are supposed to be coming out in the next few years. This is not the GPU that we're expecting yet early next year. That's supposed to be DG2, but this is Intel showing off something that they probably didn't want the public to hear about. And on top of that, we now have product names for the upcoming Arc GPUs, thanks to that same driver listing that they themselves published. So in case you want to know what the Intel GPUs might be called, it looks like we've got the Arc A380 graphics family, the A350, A370M, which would be mobile, A350M and the Iris Z A200M graphics family. Now, just note that this probably won't be the highest end cards that are out there based on previous benchmarks that we've seen. That A380 is roughly GTX 1650 super territory, so nothing to really write home about. It's a decent GPU, but wouldn't be their flagship. The speculation that's being proposed here by video cards is that maybe the A3 lineup is similar to something like their i3 lineup and that we might be 
able to get something like the A5 or the A7 or the A9 in order to compete with the higher or mid-tier chips that Nvidia and AMD are putting out. But those are the names we're looking for right now. A380, A350, they can't come soon enough. But speaking of GPUs that you can't get your hands on, Nvidia is now doing a giveaway in combination with Matrix Resurrections on some GPUs and PCs. There's three one-of-a-kind PCs that are Matrix themes as well as five rare custom backplates on the RTX 3080 Ti. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to check out this giveaway and earn one of these Matrix branded electronics yourself. But speaking of brands collaborating, Noctua teaming up with Drop to come out with a keycap set that is just their tan and brown design, which actually I'm really in favor of. The price on Drop is $115. It's a little steep for a keycap set, but this obviously would go in great conjunction with the current Noctua Asus GPU that's out there if you could ever get your hands on that. Plus, they're Noctua fans. This is kind of what you want to see, though. Noctua has such a distinct color scheme that it makes it very difficult to coordinate. And now, just like years, year, decade after they've been a prominent entry into the scene, we're now starting to get the ability to color coordinate the rest of your system to that. I feel like this is an opportunity that should have been taken a long time ago, which is why I'm so thankful for it. And I'm thankful to you guys for the support that you've shown on UFD deals. I know we talked about Honey being our sponsor for today's episode. And while Honey can find the coupon codes, they don't tell you where the deals are, or what is actually on sale without a coupon code. And that's what UFD deals is here for. So if you can check out the website, we have all the latest deals there. But let's talk about my favorite hottest tech deals that are out on the internet right now. Sennheiser has their HD 4050 SE active noise canceling Bluetooth headphones for $90 right now. That's $110 off, 90 bucks for what are really highly rated ANC headphones. The Ryzen 5 5600G is going for only $230 over on Amazon, which is about a $30 to $40 savings. Seasonic has their core GM 550 semi-modular power supply, 80 plus gold, going for $35 right now over on Newegg. And LG has their 32 inch 1440p, 165 hertz, one millisecond response time, HDR10 IPS free sync panel going for only $267 right now, which is about 33% off. Speaking of things that are percentage points off, it's getting the crypto stones, Bitcoin down a little bit, two and a half percent on the day to be at just over $48,000. Ethereum also down just under 1% to be over $4,000. Yet again, Dogecoin down 3.9% to sit at 17 and a half cents. In the meme songs department, GameStop down 2.6% to be at 144. AMC down a little bit as well to sit at $24.44. But there's a new stock that we might see on the exchanges sometime soon, and that's Reddit because they're starting to do all of the preliminary filings in order to go public. Last year, they raised $700 million at a $10 billion valuation. The IPO that they're expecting to launch right now with it does seem to indicate they might be looking at a $15 billion valuation. But in case you ever wanted to ruin everybody's favorite part of the internet, you make it be holding the corporate interests and shareholders and just make it so that they're worried about profits and not fostering the community that they built up. Let's do it. Can't wait till I take UFD Tech public. And it was made public information previously that Jack Dorsey's other company, not Twitter, instead Square, got renamed to Block. But now it looks like H&R Block is trying to block Block's attempt to change its name to Block, citing trademark infringement and all of the things that happen when you're blocking each other from actually accomplishing your Block purposes. H&R Block believing that Square's new name of Block might block their ability to be a good tax preparation company, which at first I was like, that doesn't seem very good. And they like refer to themselves as Block, saying the goodwill that Block has so carefully created and nurtured over the past six decades is now under attack by a Silicon Valley fintech company. And I was like, nobody calls H&R Block Block. There's always H&R Block. Who calls them Block? What's going on? But this does hold a little bit more water when you realize that Square previously actually acquired Credit Karma's tax preparation business because they want to offer for tax prep through the Cash App and make it so that you can have tax prep done easily. So they are actually roughly in a similar field. All I know is that if Block doesn't want to get blocked by H&R Block, they should hire Ken Block to drive around in his S1 Tunatron to do some Jim Gymkhana stuff as promotion to just get the goodwill of Block into everybody's mental blocks. I just... <laughs> All of that was brought to you by our Discord who wanted me to say all of that Block stuff and throwing Ken Block in there. And I, I made it happen because there is Ken Block news out on the internet right now. 
And there's also some news that TikTok actually wants you to live stream from your desktop onto their platform. This is something that actually I think would be really benefit. The one of the major reasons I don't stream on TikTok, even though we have an audience of over 100,000 followers on there, is because I just I'm not going to stream from my phone. I'm just gonna, not going to do it. It's not the type of content that I make. So them having a desktop live streaming app actually entices me a little bit to consider doing some live streams over there. It's very bare bones right now. The live studio doesn't have a whole lot. It's essentially portrait landscape, go live, basic emojis, not a whole lot to it. And it's only rolled out to a few users, but soon, hopefully it'll roll out to everybody. And I think this is likely a good play for them. One of the easiest ways for you to connect with your community is through live streaming. And I think that's something that TikTok has had from the very beginning, but it does kind of at least put out the people who are used to like more produced streaming setups, not having a place on their platform for it. But there wasn't a whole lot of place for video games on the Steam. SteamOS platform because the whole friggin' SteamOS operating system took up 24 gigabytes and now Valve has reduced that to 10 for the Steam Deck, okay? Just cutting it over half just to make sure it fits on that little this, this console that you're gonna carry around with you everywhere. But you know what you're not gonna play on the Steam Deck? Final Fantasy 14. you know why? Because you can't get it. You don't have it already, so you can't get it anymore because it's too popular. Square Enix pulling Final Fantasy 14 from both digital and physical store fronts in order to make sure that they are not going to continue to deal with the queue and login issues that they've been having because of the new Endwalker expansion that came out towards the end of November. They just have too many people playing the game. And obviously you can't pull all the copies from storefronts immediately. So it's gonna take a little while for them to do that. But on top of that, they're also going to be prioritizing people who have active subscriptions as opposed to people who are doing free or free trial versions of Final Fantasy 14. And you'll only be able to play if you have the free version on late nights or early early morning hours because of just the massive amount of people that are actually playing this gosh dang MMO. Are you enjoying Final Fantasy 14? I don't think I've ever personally touched an MMO RPG outside of RuneScape in like the last 15 years. So if you're enjoying it, I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And I want you to hear from me about new NVIDIA GPUs. We talked about this in the last episode that it's all just getting shifted around so much. Who knows what's real? But there's new indications of potentially the new real RTX 3080 12 gigabyte that's gotten delayed until after Chinese New Year. But we have some new indication that it's going to have more CUDA cores than the regular 3080, but less CUDA cores than the RTX 3080 Ti. And because it's on 12 gigabytes of DDR6X, like the 3080 Ti's, it's going to have the same memory bandwidth of roughly 912 gigabytes per second, which makes it a great mining card, but it doesn't have the exact amount of CUDA cores that the 3080 Ti has, but it has more than the 3080 and more RT and Tensor cores as well, which will make it a better card when it inevitably sells for, what, $1,000? Yeah, because the 3080 is going for $699, $1199 for the 3080 Ti, unless the 3080 12 gig is supposed to replace the 10 gig, in which case maybe it'll go for $699, but that'll never happen. I'm making up futures that don't exist, and NVIDIA is just making up GPUs. You want an RTX 3050? Okay, listen, we thought it was only going to be four gigabytes of VRAM, but new indications are showing that we might also get an eight gigabyte model as well. Or maybe the eight was always known and the four is now coming to light. Either way, two different RTX 3050s, but it's not just the VRAM that's different. No, my friends, just like the RTX 3080, it's also going to have a different amount of CUDA cores. This reminds me of the GTX 1063 gig and six gig. They weren't just VRAM differences. The GTX 1063 gig was legit legitimately a worse card because it had less CUDA cores. The RTX 3050 4 gig going to have roughly 200 less CUDA cores than the RTX 3050 8 gig and the ray tracing and tensor cores and all of that will also be diminished. Likely the memory bandwidth is going to be roughly the same. So uh, good low end cards. The 8 gigabyte version always necessary to make sure that you're going to be able to mine Ethereum on it. That's the best thing that you could possibly do with your GPUs in this day and age, don't you know? And don't you know that this episode of Hot News is over? Yeah, don't know what that accent was. I'm going to stop it right there and I will see you on Monday for another episode of Hot News. We've got another UFD Tech video coming this weekend. Get ready for it. It's an exciting one and I'll see you for breakfast on Monday morning. Tway with you.